it was time that mm. we noticed that it's not a, a moral issue mm. or legal issue. It's health issue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because the uh, strict abortion law mm. is endangering women's life and yeah. health. Mm. So, so we claim that it's a health issue and human rights issue, health rights issue. So it worked, I think. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Hello Humanists. We are in Seoul and I'm very honored uh, to be with some of the very successful and inspirational advocates in the abortion rights movement in Seoul. Um, we are joined today by Nayang. Hi. Hi. And Dr. Yoon. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. So, wow, first of all, congratulations. Once again, I can't congratulate you enough. Um, and a lot of similarities and differences. We've been talking all night about them. Like we will um, let our readers hear about some of them. Let's start with the issue of abortion. So um, in both of our uh, constitutions, there is a clause there, uh, or it recently got removed in yours, right? Mm. Like um, that the life of the fetus yeah. and the life of the woman should be equally mm. protected, mm. right? And because of that, mm. abortion is mostly prohibited in our country. It can only be done um, if it's to save the life of the woman. Mm. In uh, South Korea, it used to be that it can only be performed in cases of rape and incest and if the life of the woman is at stake. Mm. But because of the hard work that you have been doing, um, it's been changed, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, yeah. Right. Uh, the constitutional uh, ruling was that it's not, con it, the former abortion law was not on, was unconstitutional, mm. so we should reform our law until 2020. Mm. So there's a deadline now that yeah. by 2020, 20? the law should change yeah. right. to reflect the constitution, which says right. that it's not a crime to um, perform an abortion. Yeah. So that's great. Uh, mary many good uh, impacts on the lives of women, of course. Um, but this isn't the first time that the constitutional court mm. was convened. Back in 2012, mm. Um, the result was different, right? Yeah, um, right. It the, was split four to four. So the the vote was four, split four to four, yeah. and now it's seven to two. Seven, seven to, to two. two. So can you tell me, like, what changed, like, between two thousand twelve mm. and two thousand nineteen? Mm. What's the big difference that suddenly, like, you have this uh, big victory? So <laughs> first of all, first, yeah. first thing is uh, change. Change of common sense. Yeah. Um, in 2012, most of people don't know about abortion issues. Uh, even most of women, yeah, they didn't know abortion is illegal. So in 2012, when Constitutional Court decided uh, ruled their decision. Uh, in front of the Constitutional Court, there were just a few people, including us, just a few reporters and us. But after then, um, uh, since 2015, uh, we had feminist moment. Mm. So many Korean women uh, say, are saying, I am a feminist. Uh, publicly in uh, online and public places wow. and uh, since then they uh, say about their experience of abortion since 2016 so many of pe many people uh, have been interested about that issue since then yeah yeah so uh, many people uh, think about that 
so that's the one uh, reason. Yeah. And another one is our democratic moment uh, since 2016 or so. Yeah. So we could change our government. Yeah. And many people uh, think about the democratic things. Yeah. And many social issues are raised since then. Um, so feminist issues and also abortion issues uh, or LGBT issues, like something like that. So yeah. that's the effective thing. Uh, and other one is a uh, change of thinking about abortion issue. Um, in 2012, um, politicians and reporters and activists, and also constitutional court, we think just this issue of life versus rights. Yeah. But after then, we realized the pro-life versus pro-choice is not effective in Korean context mm. because uh, Korean government drove their family planning policies since 1970s. So many people could get their abortion uh, just um, what it say? freely and freely, yeah. Mm. Mm. But they could say yeah. their experiences in public. Yeah, just share it with their friends and some of fr family members. Yeah, <laughs> just keep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, after 2003 or four, uh, Korean government con uh, started to concern about the low fertility. Low birth rate. Uh, yeah. So they changed their policies. Uh, in 2010, pro-life group sued some hospitals after then, um, the policy getting strengthened. Yeah, they became more strict yeah, with more the strict. abortion policy. Yes, yes, yes. And after the swing of pro-life group, the... Um, what are the Pyong. The cost for Co abortion yeah. was skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, some women have to go to abroad, oh. like Japan or China, mm. to get abortion. So uh, we uh, then we uh, it was time that we noticed that it's not a, a moral issue mm. or legal issue; it's health issue. Yeah, yeah, mm. because the. Uh, Strict abortion law mm -hmm. is endangering women's life mm -hmm. and yeah. health. Mm -hmm. So, so we claim that it's a health issue and human rights issue, health rights issue. So it worked, I think. Yeah, I and think so. That's a very good um, tactic. reframing mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right, of right. the discussion, right? right. Um, mm -hmm. I think I really admire what you did there mm -hmm. because instead of conceding to the um, so-called mm. pro-life because mm. I don't agree that they're mm -hmm. you know really mm -hmm. pro-life. Mm. You you said no. Mm. We also are pro-life. Mm. We are pro. Right. Right. The right. woman has life. The yes. woman has health, right. and it should be respected mm. as well. Yeah. And I think uh, one thing that you mentioned as well mm. was the way when the debates would happen mm. uh, would happen. Mm. It mischaracterized mm. the sentiment about abortion. Mm. Like mm -hmm. um, even if majority in the country were supportive mm. of something so common, mm. right? Uh, it's so common that one in five or 20% yeah. of... All, all, uh, yeah, 20% of all women, yeah. uh, as well as 40% in all pregnant mm. women would have an abortion, would have abortion in, in their, their lifetime. lifetime. That's super common, right? right? So, so naturally, like everyone would be um, supportive of it, but they were quiet because of the stigma, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? So mm. when 
when the debates would happen where with you would take part in the debate for example mm-hmm. they would only put one of you and <laughs> one of the conservative right. side right. and you would bring your science and medicine and mm. they would bring their their religion their, religion, their bibles and right. beliefs right. And it's not a debate yeah the it's media dry, describe it as a pro-life versus pro-choice yeah they want you to describe it as this 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 kind of um uh, opposition yeah uh, so they bring us and one of the pro-life uh, yeah. activists mm. in together so but but uh, it, it's not equal, right? Right, yeah. it's not equal. It's not fifty-fifty. Yeah. yeah, because everybody is exp- everybody experienced that abortion. In, everybody could possibly express their abortion in their lifetime, yeah. and it's common. And the common public opinion about the abortion was, uh, you know, uh, the year before last year, uh, the. Uh, one poll said that about 70 to 80 percent of uh, uh, Korean population, yeah. regardless of gender, yeah. uh, agreed to reform the abortion law. Yeah, yeah. So it's not uh, uh, equal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah, we like one one other thing that that is that I found interesting is the the language and. I guess the conventions that we use, like in our country, in the Philippines, like people are conditioned to think of the fetus Mm. as a human being already with all the rights that involves. Mm. Because our word for pregnant people is nagdadalang tao, which means carrying a person. Mm. That's literally what pregnant in Filipino Mm. translates to. Mm -hmm. Um, And compared with Korean culture, Mm. where when... Uh, a baby is born mm. the baby is immediately yeah, one, one year, year old, year old. Yeah. right yeah. so so i noticed in the 7-elevens here for example the, <laughs> the, the prohibitions would be 19 years old and I, at first i found that like why is it 19 in other places it's 18 it's yeah. because you calculate yes, ages right, differently because yeah. you you know and we were kidding earlier like the the pregnancy is nine months <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the delivery is three months long right. so when it's born it's like <laughs> yeah. yeah but see it's like people are conditioned by this kind of traditional mm. convention to think that fetuses mm-hmm. are actually mm-hmm. persons mm-hmm. when you know that that's not really the case mm. and um, yeah we you had to overcome that mm. traditional barrier and another mm. common traditional barrier is religion I want to talk a bit about mm. the influence of religion but before that um, you two, you're campaigning on the side of uh, safe abortion rights, mm. but you have different religious views. That tell us, mm. tell me about that. So you are from a like you are an evangelical, yes, I'm Christian, an Christian, Christian, yeah, yeah, yes, but a progressive one, yeah, like progressive a, one, yeah, and mm. and you are, uh, I'm atheist, <laughs> a bushy nunja. Bushinunja. Oh, there, I got it right. <laughs> finally, finally. So yeah. Bushinunja. Yeah. But you're on the same side on this. Like you're mm. you're uh, fighting for abortion rights for mm. for pregnant people. Yeah. And uh, like, t- tell me about the stigma. Mm. Like, is there any stigma towards becoming a Bushinunja or not believing, um, or is it just neutral? Would you think? Like, uh, because in other places, in conservative places like the Philippines, for example. Like Bushinonja equals evil, mm-hmm. equals immoral, equals mm-hmm. the kind of person that you would not vote to become a representative in government, for example. Mm-hmm. But here is that the the, mm-hmm. the case, or it's common to not have a religion in Korea, and it's not strange or not. It's not, not strange. Yeah, it's not strange, and of course we have some kind of christianity power and catholic power and politicians are uh, considering their vote from mm. the bad yeah. religion so they are um, uh, they listen to the to catholics or yeah. the buddhist or uh, churches um, but korea has 
uh, Korea doesn't have the national stigma. religion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's, it's not stigmatized to have yeah. that religion, that, to not have a religion. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think more than 50% are actually not religious mm-hmm. or part of the folk religions. Mm-hmm. Right, and only second are the evangelicals. Of course, there are different kinds of evangelicals. Mm-hmm. Like one kind are the six 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 ones walking in <laughs> in yes. Myeongdong. Yes, <laughs> and, and in in some places, right, in places like the Philippines, people would look at those people and think, oh, they're admirable. They're very, you know, mm-hmm. they're devoting their life to something they have faith in. But yeah. is there a different view here, maybe, of people who mm-hmm. who do that kind of thing? Uh, what what do you what's your opinion of you know of such people who push you know their religion in such ways? I think most of people hate. <laughs> <laughs> hate hate yes. is a strong word. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so so they're hated here. Yeah. Uh, it's it's okay. kind of uh, when you have a religion, then you you're being considered as a stereotype. Mm, like a uh, yeah. Yeah, like. Um, uh, what what ISIS ISIS fundamentalist fundamentalist extremist yes. extremist right yeah 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 so you're see like um so religious people are bunched with the negative stereotypes mm. so in this way there's uh, prejudice and discrimination right. okay. against religious people mm. uh, whereas there's only neutrality when it comes to non-religious people <laughs> which is the opposite uh, case uh, yeah. in conservative yes. cases so yeah I find that very interesting yeah. and and about abortion yeah uh, most of churches actually don't mention about the yeah. abortion in church evangelical yeah. churches yeah because um, most of Korean evangelical churches just supported uh, family planning policies of 1990s government. Yeah. So they actually have not mentioned about the abortion issues mm. in churches. Yeah. Till 2010. Yeah, only in 2010. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I find that everything was changed. <laughs> every, everything <laughs> changed, changed in, yes, 2010 in 2010 <laughs> when the fundamentalists attacked, yes, right? Yes. So, some so <laughs> yeah. fundamentalists come, came out after then and they are speaking publicly uh, mm. in public places yeah. and to government yeah. and some radical groups uh, rallied in public places. Mm. Yeah. Actually, actually mm. uh, the tone of the Catholic, um, the tone of Catholic's voice were also changed because at, at 2010, uh, the Catholic or churches said that the abortion is crime and sin. Yeah. But in these days, the Catholic said that. Uh, Abortion is still a sin and crime, but women shouldn't be punished. Mm. Oh, mm. Yeah, also changing. changing. Now, yes. today. Yes. Today just in before, Korea. Yeah, just mm. before the constitutional decision, yeah. they changed their Catholics laws. agree that decriminalization yeah. of abortion should that, that is... They, they not, uh, actually, they didn't speak of decriminalization. They didn't say discrimination. Yeah, not that we strong. We should forgive the women. But they were. The, uh, ah. The, 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 Pope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pope said that we, see, should, not, mm-hmm. we should forgive yeah. the mm-hmm. women mm-hmm. who had abortion, mm-hmm. so the Korean Catholic voices were mm-hmm. changed also, ah. so we should not punish the women. So there was a transformation mm-hmm. even of Catholic voices. Mm-hmm. That's that's very good. That's mm-hmm. very progressive of them. Yeah. Right. But many of Christian women have um, uh, stigma by themselves. Yeah. yeah, just by themselves, yeah, even by if themselves. nobody's telling them yeah, it's wrong, they, they themselves... Are, so they hide in their experiences, Yeah, then yeah. and just they go to church or temple. Yeah. Yes. In, even in temple, yeah. we have big event uh, that name, we call it that uh, Chondoje. Uh, they praying for missed fetus. Mm. And monks are uh, praying for them mm. for a few days. 
and they serve some fruit and rices and to money. the Buddhist monks. <laughs> and money. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So to paralleling mm. that that guidance to the yeah. heaven. Mm. Yeah. So so that increases the the guilt mm. and the wow. stigma, yes. right? Because yes. mm. because there's this religious aspect. So mm. so how do advocates like you, and you know uh, medical practitioners mm. like reduce stigma of mm. women, especially who feel this mm. kind of guilt? Mm. Like what do you do? How, what do you tell them? As you know, like, what has worked in your experience? Mm. I think the the. Uh, I think the best best method is that uh, we should keep telling that abortion is common. It's common. Yeah, yes, it can occur in a common place, and every woman can face it. And you know, we don't have perfect contraceptive method in um, in spite of this yeah. uh, medical um, uh, innovations, yeah. but. Uh, but we don't have one hundred percent effective effective, effective yeah. contrastive methods. So so it it could be common and it can be yours and it could be mine. Yeah. And you know, uh, you do know your friends or your mothers, your sisters who had abortions. So it's our story, it's your story, it's my story. That, that kind of uh, message was... Well, wow, that's very strong. It's mm. your story, it's my story, it's our story, right? It's certainly one in five is such a huge number. Oh, yeah. Right? What we, do you, yeah. we encourage people to uh, keep their bo- uh, speak out their voices. Yeah. share their stories, share, right? In, their stories. in the U.S., there's right, a right. shout your abortion right, kind of right, campaign, right. and you know, just storytelling is so powerful. Mm-hmm. What What about you? What, what do you think? Is Actually, church most of churches and priests knows about that, yeah, but just they man- don't mention about that. They don't so, talk about yeah, it. Talk yeah, talk about it. So, um, I told to my Christian colleagues and friends, um, we are following Jesus' life. Then, um, if we think about Jesus' life, uh, he, uh, he tried to make a justice for poor people and uh, uh, marginalized the people. Yeah. So if we think about Jesus' life and if we want to follow his life, we try to make a justice for marginalized people yeah. and social minorities. Yeah. So abortion is issue is also like that. I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to justice with Jesus, you should make justice for woman. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. said like that. Yeah, to I think my yeah. Christian friends. That's a yeah. very humanistic message. Yeah. You know, like it's mm. the people who are suffering mm. in this life. Mm-hmm. We should do our best to help them. Yeah. Right. right? Like um, if, whether there's a Heaven or a hell, mm. we don't know, but people are suffering now, mm. and mm. having safe abortion rights will certainly help these people now, and that's mm. something that you know the Jesus that people mm. admire and look up mm. to would have done, mm. you know, if you were walking in the streets. And mm. yeah, that's a that's a good mm. way. So mm. um, I think what you said mm. about um, following Jesus in mm. that very humanitarian mm. kind of way mm. and normalizing. Mm the experience and just yeah. talking about it mm-hmm. like sharing the stories is very powerful mm-hmm. and it certainly worked mm-hmm. in this context right, right. so mm-hmm. if there's because because from 2012 mm-hmm. to to 2019 you know your journey like mm-hmm. if you could have told your earlier selves you know a yeah. shortcut <laughs> yeah. you know like something like oh don't do that that <laughs> doesn't work yeah. or maybe do more of this mm-hmm. This is very effective. Mm-hmm. Like, are there any things that you haven't mentioned yet in our mm-hmm. conversation that mm-hmm. maybe you want to tell your younger selves <laughs> to shortcut the process? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, like people like us in, in conservative places mm-hmm. that do not have the success that you have achieved yet, mm-hmm. 
we're looking out for things that we can try in our diff- in our own context, right? Of course, our 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 places are different, but maybe there's some principles there that we can apply to. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I was uh, when I was in 2012, then I just started my activism in abortion rights. Uh, at that time, I just uh, translated the WHO guideline mm. and just read it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, WHO said that yeah. uh, abortion is health care and mm. every other country like England or France are doing doing this as a health care. I just, just describe or just read it. Yeah. Uh, but but now I I'm uh, rather than saying that uh, to my colleague physicians or obstetric gynecologists that uh, we are doctors and we have this code do no harm uh, to women. Yeah. yeah, it's more effective for the physicians itself because uh, WHO guideline or the examples of other countries are too far away. Yeah, yeah. yeah so in this place, to your patient, yeah. we do no harm. Yeah, yeah it, it was it was worked out. I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, like what you said about the shifting of the language from mm-hmm. rights to health, health and, and right, life, right? Right, right? Yeah, that's uh, very very good. In twenty two thousand twelve, constitutional court ju- judges of constitutional court said, uh, "Fetus rights is public interest." Yeah. But women's rights is private interest. Wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. But uh, November of the same year, yeah. a 19 year old woman died during her surgery. Uh, surgery abortion. Yeah, yeah. So at, at the time, she, um, her pregnancy was. 23 months, uh, so weeks. weeks, 23 weeks, mm, but the doctor couldn't transfer to other hospital because of the law. Yeah. So the, um, that was uh, very effective to me. So after then, uh, since 2016, we made a slogan, mm. if the abortion is illegal, illegal the criminal is uh, government. government. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think it's very effective yeah, slogan. Yeah. You put the responsibility to, to the, the name government. The government. government. Yeah. Yes. You're right, you're right. Because Korean government pushes their family planning policy to development for development and anti-communism at the time. Yeah. But after 2000, they changed their policies also for development. Uh, yeah, the population yeah, control. Population control. Yeah, yeah. So they, ju- they didn't care about the life, any, any of life. They didn't yeah. care about that. Yeah. Just they think about their population control and development, GDP, anti-communism line. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we said we, we uh, have been saying about that since 2016. Yeah, we realized that context yeah. in Korean context, history, uh, and we gathered uh, and studied since 2015 together. Yeah. And we studied many Kind, many of the kinds of contexts in Korean history. Yeah. So I think the slogan we made is very effective yeah. in public and also judges in constitutional court. Yeah. And our uh, l- uh, colleague lawyers, they, um, they, they convinced the judgment in constitutional court yeah. by the slogan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because you were you were saying about mm. this this very strong culture mm. of democratic action mm. and mm. appreciating democracy in mm. Korea. Yeah, like 1993 mm. was it? The you know that that first 
yeah. time that you actually experienced like voting mm-hmm. for a non-military mm-hmm. ristic, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. kind democratic, of government. Yeah. Democratic government. Right. Yeah. First mm-hmm. democratic government. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that so you've you still have that memory of fighting for your democracy yeah. and you champion that democracy mm. every step of the way, mm. uh, which is something that you know it's only to be admired. I think. Mm. Thank you so much yeah. <laughs> for sharing your advice and your insights and your time with me. And thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank it was so uh, our pleasure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you for watching this episode of Hello Humanists, and please. Stay tuned for the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe. Till then, see you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Ciao.